Good morning. This is Patty Gray with the Ohio Department of Education. Welcome to today's webinar on the Social Studies Revised Standards and Model Curriculum. I'm with the Office of Communications and Outreach bringing you the webinar today. Before we begin the presentation, there are a few housekeeping items. And we want to make sure that you get all the information that we want to uh, share with you today. So if you have questions, we will take them through a chat box. And on your screen, the presentation is full screen. But up in the far left corner, you will see the word chat, and you will see a plus sign. If you want to ask a question, and any time during the presentation, as it occurs to you, click onto the plus sign. You will see a drop-down box that will, uh, you can enter your question and then hit the send button. This, today's webinar, only the presenters will see the questions. Um, and because we have as many people as we do, more than 100 on the call, you can imagine that we will not get to every question today. We will answer as many questions as time permits, but know that your questions will inform a future FAQ on this, on this topic. Additionally, the webinar is being recorded and will be posted on the Social Studies page of the ODE website as soon as it is available. We anticipate that to be in about a week. Finally, uh, later today or tomorrow, you'll be receiving an email message with a quick, with the link to a quick online survey, and we appreciate your feedback to inform any future webcasts and use of technology. Now it is my pleasure to turn the presentation over to Dwight Gross, educational consultant with the Center for Curriculum and Assessment. Dwight. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. This is a the Focus One targeted professional development webinar on the new direction uh, for social studies in Ohio. As Patty said, I'm Dwight Gross, uh, a consultant in the Office of Curriculum and Assessment at the Ohio Department of Education, and with me is my colleague, Bill Music. What we're going to present to you today is essentially the Focus One presentation that was uh, uh, provided to teachers around the state back in the fall up through December. This PowerPoint is actually is available. Um, we've made it available in our uh, transition tools at the revised Social Studies and Model Curriculum website. As we go through this, uh, you'll see there are some activities that we had the teachers uh, do, and uh, I will identify what those activities are. As obviously, we're not going to be doing them. In, in, in during this uh, hour, a little over an hour presentation. But if you are interested in having the materials that went along with those uh, present uh, those activities, uh, just e email us and we'll make sure that you have access to them. One of the first things we wanted to do at the uh, at these sessions is to at least find out where the where the teachers are to assess what they know and don't know about the revised standards. And we actually had a questionnaire of 10 questions that we gave to the uh, teachers to ask them to complete. Uh, we didn't get any the answers at that point, uh, but I'll just throw a couple of those out to you that you might think about. For, for example, one of the questions wa uh, was, expectations for learning in the model curriculum are statements that specify what students should know and be able to do and can provide guidance for how students may be assessed. Think about that. We asked the teachers to essentially identify that as a true or false statement. The second one, students are required to have one half unit of American history and one half unit of American government for graduation. True or false? True or false? The new high school courses developed under the 2010 social studies standards are grade specific. And finally, the 2010 academic content standards for social studies were created as a response to federal legislation. Now we'll come back to those uh, much later in this presentation, but it just 
somewhat set the stage for the uh, for the uh, presentation that our regional content facilitator facilitators provided. So the goals for this presentation: we're going to review essentially the standard revision process because teachers we want to make sure teachers know where we got how we got here, where we came from, why the revision and the standards, and also that they become familiar and that you'll become familiar with the tools and some of the new tools we are providing. Show how the revised standards provide the basis for model curricula. Understand the purposes and components of the model curriculum. And examine tools to create units and lessons for instruction. Now, the, the revised standards are as a result of the Ohio General Assembly and amended substitute House Bill 1 that required the State Board of Education to adopt academic content standards for social studies by June 2010, and this they did, and also adopt a model for social studies by March of 2011, which they did. So here are the goals for the revision of the social studies standards. Our task, first of all, was to identify the most essential concepts and skills. Also, make them more user-friendly and manageable. We were hearing from the field that the current 2002 standards were, were difficult uh, to manage, to uh, massage into instruction. So essentially to pare down the content for in-depth instruction. Dwight, I am going to take a break because there are people who have joined us who are on the waiting list. We need, we're going to go very briefly back to the very first um, slide so that they can see the numbers that they need to dial in on. So for anyone who is, uh, well, they won't hear me. <laughs> Just want to let you know there are people that are on the video who um, did not get the information about uh, the dial-in. So we're going to give them a few minutes in order to get that, and I've also put it on the um, link, the message to them. Okay, we're going to catch up now, Dwight, to where you were. Thank you, Patty. Okay, here's where we left off, and we were explaining what the goals for the Social Studies Standards Revision are, and I mentioned to identify the most essential concepts and skills and to, to make them more user-friendly and manageable for teachers with greater depth of understanding for students, to provide course syllabi for high school courses. This is new. Under the current 2002, we did not provide course syllabi for high school. Also, to provide a clear progression. There should be a clear progression from grade to grade, or at least from elementary to middle to high school. And finally, to address the needs of students for the 21st century. So, so those were the goals that we had when we went into the revision uh, process for social studies. Now, here's the first goal that I mentioned. And this was to identify the most essential concepts and skills we decided we really wanted to reach out and have a lot of stakeholders involved in this process, which we feel we did. We started in June of 2009 with a teacher group. We brought in teachers from around the state to the state library, and we already had some ideas of perhaps some issues that we needed to address, so we presented them to those teachers. We did create an advisory committee, and these are the Ohio Social Studies stakeholder groups social studies related organizations, for example, the Ohio Council of Social Studies, the Ohio Center for Law Related Education, the Ohio Geographic Alliance, the Ohio Council on um, Economic Education, the Ohio Supervisors uh, Network, 
uh, Social Studies Supervisors Network. We had uh, representatives from the Buckeye History Council, even the Federal Reserve, to come in and, and assist us in addressing some issues and to begin to move forward to revise standards. Then we put in a working group. This was the group that actually would sit down and do the revision process. We had represent, we had teachers from elementary, middle, high school. We had professors who teach and train teachers to be. And we also had content-specific um, higher education representatives to help begin to uh, create um, the revised standards. They met in August 2009. And then we brought them back in in, the, uh, in September to look at the vertical um, piece uh, so that we made sure we had vertical alignment as well. We had focus groups. Some of you participated in focus groups. We actually asked the various uh, social studies stakeholder groups to set up focus groups for us. Anywhere around the state, we asked for two-hour meetings. And we would come in and do those, and we did those from, I think, through November, in the, in the fall of 2009, essentially. And we also had national content experts. We had one for history, one for geography, one for government, and one for economics, and also one to make sure that we address the issues of equity. And finally, we also did online reviews. We did two. We did from November 2009 to January 2010, and then we did it again in the spring based on some of the comments uh, that we received from the earlier focus groups and from the online reviews. Now, the second goal that we had was to have greater manageability and greater depth of understanding. And we took the seven standards and we condensed them down to four. And you'll see those in just a moment. And we re reorganized the content to reduce the amount that, at each grade level. Um, as an example, under the 2002 standards in grade six, grade six had 36 grade level indicators. And under the 2010 standards, grade six now has only 16 content statements. Um, we feel that these developments uh, allow for teaching content in greater depth. Now here's one of the tools, one of the first tools we put up. This is the crosswalk. And the crosswalk documents, they summarize the relationship between the 2002 and 2010 academic content standards. Now this tool, this information is provided to assist curriculum specialists like many of you and even teachers in reviewing your current curriculum and instruction in preparation for the transition to the revised standards. Now, while there are clear connections between both sets of standards, there's also some clear differences that teachers need to, and everyone needs to understand. The structure and organization of the standards has been revised, and we include new terminology. So it's important to keep in mind that these documents identify connections between the content statements, uh, the 2010 content statements, and the 2002 benchmarks. But these are not equivalent expressions and do not represent absolute alignment. The, it, the tool is helpful when you're looking at, uh, for example, if the teacher has, sees a, perhaps a connection and has some teaching materials, that teaching materials might be able to be realigned to use to uh, match and align to the new content statement. So in an effort to streamline the standards, you'll see what we did. We took the seven standards on the left and uh, condensed them into four strands. So for example, people and societies, where did that go? Well, it went in history, but it also mainly went into geography. When you look under the topic human systems, that's where people and societies mostly went. But it also was embedded in history. Geography, of course, is, it still is, is geography. Economics, same thing. Now government, we had, and citizenship rights and responsibilities, we morphed those into government. And social studies skills, um, and methods. Uh, initially, at the first draft that was released in the fall of 2009, we didn't have that 
included on the right side as you see now. Essentially, we were going to put those in the model curriculum, but the, one of the helpful things about the online review is a lot of the teachers said, where are the social studies skills? They should be up there as well. So we, we massaged the, um, our documents as well as this, this chart, and we did uh, embed that, or at least those skills, and you'll see what we did. You'll see that we have, for history, we have historical thinking. We have geography. We have spatial thinking. Government, we have civic participation. Economics, we have two, economic decision-making and financial literacy. Now, when you look on the pre-K through eight, uh, grade eight documents, you'll see those skills are up front. They're the first topics in each of the screens. At the high school level, we're more, more or less content um, and specific. So you'll see in American history and modern world history, you'll see historical thinking, both of those, and you'll see those up front. In economics, you'll see the, those two, economic decision-making, financial literacy. In the American government course, course you'll see civic per, uh, participation, and in our world geography course, you'll see spatial thinking. So here's our revised scope and sequence for pre-K up to grade eight. Most of the changes that we made were in grades four, five, and six. And we, we made some modest adjustments in grade seven, uh, so that wasn't as, as, as large or, or as expansive uh, um, years of, of, of for that course. And we made a modest change in grade eight as well. But you'll see most of the changes in grades four, five, and four, five, and six. And actually, we this is massage from the first draft as well. We've got some good, really good input from the first drafts, and, and uh, finally, in the second draft, this was what we presented on the uh, uh, online review in the in the spring of 2010. So here's what if you're looking for pre-K to grade eight. Here are, this is how we have our standards organized. You'll see this is grade three. So if you look at pre-K through grade eight, it all looks just, they all look like, like this. You'll see at the top, you'll see, and this is, as I said, grade three, you'll see the theme, and the theme for grade the, uh, three is uh, communities, communities, past, present, near, and far, and underneath it, you'll see the description of the, um, of the theme. On the sides, on the left side, uh, vertically, you'll see the strands, starting with history, geography, um, government, and then economics. Then you'll see the topics. Now, see the arrow there is, this, uh, oh, excuse me, you'll see the, uh, um, well, I will go ahead and mention the topics there. You'll see, for example, uh, geography, and you'll see the topic, and you'll see the first one, there, 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 there's the skills, and I mentioned the skills appear first. So you see there right beside history and geography and economics, government, you'll see, first of all, those are the skills. That's what the teachers see first. Now, I'll come back to uh, later about, uh, about how teachers should keep that in mind when they're developing um, their lessons and instruction. You also th see the content statements. Now, th these are different. You'll notice there are no uh, performance verbs at the front end of, of those statements. They essentially identify what the students should know or be able to do. Now here's the high school course syllabi. Right now, required for graduation, students need three units in high school in social studies to graduate including in those three units, one half unit of American history and one half unit of American government. Now we also provided electives. Now in our initial draft, we had three of those electives, modern world history, economics and financial literacy, and contemporary world issues. One of the advantages of, uh, advantages of having that first online draft was that uh, a lot of the comments uh, were asking about geography, why we did not include a world geography 
course. So we went back to the table, and we drafted that. And on the second online review in the spring of 2010, we did uh, provide that. Um, one of the things I should note, those courses are not grade-specific. And we were also asked why we didn't include other electives. We, we just identified essentially the electives we thought were most common in, in most of the schools. But keep in mind, schools are not uh, required to uh, offer these electives. That's a local district decision. But we do provide them, and we do provide syllabi as, as, as a guide uh, for, for those. Uh, at this point, there has been no decision on end of course uh, tests for any, any of the high school courses. And here's what the syllabi, course syllabi looks like. Now, this is for American history. And you'll see that uh, you'll see the theme for the high school course at the top there. And then we have a number of topics uh, for, for all the high school courses. And of course, there's an example. The first topic, as I mentioned, are the skills. And since this is American history, first set of skills are historical thinking and skills. But that's how the, the course syllabi are set up. That's just front page. Now, this was a lead-in to one of the first activities uh, we did, using the crosswalk. So we gave a sample for the teachers to look at. And on the left there, you'll see Content Statement 15 from American government, from the 2010 high school course syllabi for American government. And in the center, you'll see the connections from the crosswalk to the current or 2002 standards. And so we provided some uh, analysis, or at least some summary, of the change that took place on the right side. So we have the teachers essentially look at that as a segue into the activity they're going to be doing. So here's the activity we asked the teachers to do. And we asked them, we actually put them in, you know, we have them either meet in groups pre-K to, to 4, grades 5 to 8, and grades 9 to 12. And essentially, they're going to take the crosswalk and identify a content statement and related con and benchmarks and identify one, and they're giving a, an activity sheet on that, and they're at, actually asked to look at what's happened and what's happened to the change, what change has taken place, added, what's new, how that might impact um, instruction, uh, and, and what goes on in the classroom to think about that as well. So they essentially see how to use the crosswalk, and then we do a debriefing. And remember, the crosswalk only shows the 2002, the link to the benchmark. It doesn't go deeper than that. Than that. It doesn't go to the grade level indicators. And this activity takes maybe about 20, 25 minutes. Now, if you're interested in having this activity and you see this, you know, just email us and we'll be sure that we make sure that, that you, you, you receive those. And... Um, it's, it's, a, it's a good activity, and one of the things we want to make sure that teachers uh, understand is, is what I commented before, that they are not an exact alignment. So when the teachers begin to revise to the new standards, they really need to use the revised standards themselves and no longer use the current standards. They need to use just the revised standards. For example, you know, if the, student, if the teacher saw the Articles Confederation covered in the 2002 and they see it in the 2010 standards, we don't want them to think, well, well, I already taught that. Okay, I already teach that. I got materials. I'm ready to go. We want them to make sure they read because the content statements are different. 
Now, here is the next goal that we, we identified. We should see a clear progression from grade, from at least, if not grade to grade, at least from elementary to middle to high school. So here's an example of progression on how the United States Constitution is covered. You'll see how it is under the revised standards in grade four, how it's identified in grade eight, and what happens in the American government course in high school. Now, we have added a new tool uh, a few weeks ago that's there for you to use, and it's not mentioned in this PowerPoint because we didn't use it uh, during Focus 1. And we're not using it in Focus 2, but it's there for you to use. It's under our transition tools. It's called the Vertical Articulation Chart. And essentially, we have all of the content statements from grades pre-K through high school uh, under history, the same under geography, the same under government, same under economics. And there is an activity that, that I can provide to you if you want to walk the teachers through that. So they begin to look at the uh, progression and, and have some vertical articulation between middle, elementary, and high schools. And if you forget where that information is, the vertical articulation chart, again, just email us and we'll make sure uh, we'll, we'll give you that link. And then the, the fifth goal. Our fifth goal was to meet the needs of students for the 21st century. Well, the 21st century skills, there, there are quite a few um, skills that, that uh, align to social studies. And these include civic li literacy, financial and economic literacy, and global awareness, among others. So we kept that in mind in developing the standards as well as the model curricula. And of course, most of you have probably have seen this graph as well. And then this, this as well, and you'll see the uh, 21st century skills uh, that, are, that are identified in there. And we attempted to have these included, as I mentioned, in our standards and model curricula. Now here's the next activity, and we actually got really good responses from this one. How can teachers take the revised standards, make sense of them, and begin to understand how they might be able to organize them into instruction, into units for instruction? How can you use more than one content statement in a lesson or unit? And there's, there are a lot of related content statements, and they could be clustered together. And we provided a unit organizer uh, as an example of how the teachers could actually uh, begin to um, create units. Um, now, here's the unit organizer that we provide. It's actually two-sided. And this has an example uh, for example, let's say the unit was on the colonies moved toward independence. And you'll see that we have clustered several content statements, several strands. Uh, history, you'll see the um, historical thinking there. And then plus one of the content statements for that particular period. And then geography, government, and economics. And that's a start. So it's backward design. They start with the end in mind. Our high school teachers in this activity had a little more struggle with this. And I think the reason was that they, they saw that a lot of their topics are already clustered in, into uh, what they could interpret as units. So here's a sample that we've, we've actually provided in Focus 2. For example, the changing role of government. So what happened? How did government, the role of government change? For example, you know, how, how did it change in, in, during the Great Depression? You know, because of the, the New Deal, the expansion of government. And then what happened during World War II, which expanded government? And then the, the Great Society, et cetera, and then the period from 1980s when it began to pare down, and then that post-2001, uh, uh, 911. So this is an example how to make connections. For example, if the teacher teaches the Great Depression, is there something, can the, can the teacher connect, or can students student see a connection between what's hap what happened economically at that point in time 
with what's happening economically and now. So this is this is a tool. And again, this has been well received. And then of course they would develop essential questions. And then this is what the backside would look like, where they would identify it, the the unit uh, the strategies for diverse uh, learners, and then they would also see how they can do interdisciplinary uh, connections as well. Connect with speaking, listening, writing, reading, art, music, technology. So here's the activity we actually ask them to do. So we we pass out the blank sheets. Uh, we have the standard. Uh, we have the uh, model curriculum there available for them, and we actually ask them to bring in for for the, the for the for the model uh, curriculum for the grade they currently teach or the high school course course they currently teach, and then work in their groups to to create um, so a, a cluster and create a title for the unit and then share out. And that's essentially all we ask them to do, just at that point, just to see how they can cluster units. You know, this activity takes about 30, maybe 40 minutes at best, but around 30 minutes. Again, I can give you the directions for this and how to structure this activity and uh, what, teachers, what, what the teachers need to have if you wish to use it. Okay, now we're going to go into the model curriculum and how we got here. This is the uh, this is where we got it, and again, it came from the state legislature, as I mentioned before. And this was what our charge was in developing the model curriculum. So, what is it? Well, it's a web-based tool, and I will mention we will soon launch the interactive model curriculum. Right now, we have, for lack of better words, the flat version. It's up and running right now. But it's to provide curricular and instructional guidance, also to inform assessment development at the local and at the state levels. And we also have instructional strategies and resources. We'll go over all those in just a minute. But this is an activity we essentially was a scavenger hunt. And there are about four, maybe I think there are about just about four questions on there, but just to for the teachers to walk through the model curriculum so they understand the components. One of the, uh, act, one of the questions that they kind of struggled on was, was, I think, number three, where they were asked to um, see the connection between the thinking skills, the skills part of the model curriculum, and the standards uh, with the rest of the content statements. Essentially, what we wanted them to see is that the Thinking skills should be embedded through the, uh, the school year in all the instruction and repeated. In other words, they shouldn't cover, for example, historical thinking skills and do a unit on that, and that's it for the rest of the year. It should be embedded in all the lessons. So, the, so this, essentially, the, the, the students are the, uh, the doers. They take action in, in, in the lessons. They take an active role in, in, in their work. This activity takes maybe about 15 minutes. Now, just I'm sure most of you are able to find the model curriculum, but I may want to make sure that you know at the bottom there is is uh, where you see educators. You click on academic content standards, and then you'll come to this page. Now, keep in mind where the arrow is right now. That moves occasionally. I think the latest. I think it's up where standards for families is, but it, it still reads the same. So you click that on, and uh, there we get the access to the four content areas that have their uh, standards and model curricula available at this time. So we, you know, and, and let the teachers, walk the teachers through this so they're comfortable. Uh, we're not known for having an easily navigable um, website. So once they get uh, familiar with this and uh, find some short, uh, short uh, cuts on this. And this is what our model curriculum revised standards page looks like. And, of course, the standards are the first ones that are offered up there, pre-kindergarten through grade 8, and then the high school, the high, uh, high school syllabi. And we do now offer, under model curriculum in the introduction and development, we just uh, added the introduction to Ohio's academic content standards, pre-K through 12. So we hope you make use of that. And then down below, then, we have the model curriculum for, grade, for pre-K, all the way through grade eight, and then we also have for the high school 
uh, model curriculum uh, syllabi, the model curriculum. Now keep in mind, this is not the full page because down below there you'll also see the transition tools that you'll want to make sure you become familiar with, and, and, and I'll talk about those a little later. So this is what the American history, um, for example, this is what the American history uh, model curriculum for content statement 12 looks like. This is the structure for all, every content statement for PK, for pre-K all the way through high school. Looks the same. So at the top, you have, in this case, it's a high school course, and pre-K through grade uh, 8, you'll have the, the, the grade, uh, and then underneath that, you'll have the theme. And then you'll see uh, the topic that's addressed for this content statement. And then you'll see next to the content statement. You'll see content statement 12. Now, underneath that are, uh, are two important pieces on the left side that your teachers need to pay attention to, the content elaborations and the expectations for learning. The content elaborations essentially provide the parameters. They expound on the content statement. Um, and below that are the expectations for learning. There you see the performance verb at the beginning. Performance verb, the, the expectation for learning essentially identifies what the student should be able to do uh, to demonstrate uh, deep understanding of the content statement. Now, this is important. The content statement the content elaborations and the expectations for learning are static. That's what we call it, static. That means they will not change. And they will inform assessment at the local and the state level. So, at, for example, at the state level, uh, any grades or high school courses that are identified to be assessed, those pieces, the content statement, content elaboration, expectations for learning, will inform item, item development. But the teachers do need to use, even if they don't use the instructional, all the, the, the right side, they need to use those three pieces so they understand the, the, the parameters of that content statement and they also need to understand the expectations for learning so, so for their own assessment. Now the right side are what we refer to as the liquid side. This is the side, or the fluid side actually, <laughs> This is, this is the fluid side. Um, this is the piece that will change over, over a period of time. So, for example, we have the instructional strategies. These are not full lessons like we offer now, the model lessons under the current standards. These are essentially ideas. And two or three sentences that are just strategies. Now, we are going to be uh, replacing those periodically uh, with new strategies, and we're going to set up a mechanism, at least the plan is, for teachers to submit those and that we can um, populate those and we won't then, then archive the previous instructional strategies for teachers to find. We also have uh, a link there for diverse learners. That is a very, very good site, actually. And you'll see that site common to the other uh, content areas. And then the instructional resources, these are all going to be web-based. We will have a set of criteria for determining what goes in there. Obviously, we need to take a look at those periodically because websites go dead periodically. We've already found a couple of those that we've put up in, our, in the model curriculum already. Uh, uh, teachers can't ex access them. And then, of course, we'll make connections as well, and then the essential questions. Now, some of the model curriculum don't have these filled in. You know, for example, you see the connections and central questions not filled in there. That, that's fine. Over a period of time, we'll fill those in and then replace those. As I mentioned, soon we will be launching the interactive model curriculum. All right, so this is the next step and next activity we teacher, took the teachers through. This is actually creating lessons using the, uh, the cluster of content statements and, uh, from the unit they created uh, in the previous activities. Now what we are asking them to do is think about what type of instructional strategy or you know, see, how would they assess the students, first of all. And we're, we, we want them to think in terms of a performance-based assessment. What should the student be able to demonstrate 
that they've mastered and have deep understanding of that content state. And what instructional strategy or strategies will take the students uh, to deep understanding? And then finally, what possible resources might they be able to use? Now, this is again about probably about a 30, maybe a 40 minute activity, you know, including the debriefing. It's essentially to show the teachers again how to use the unit organizer tool. Again, we have that unit organizer tool available under the transition tools in our website. Um, and we could also give instructions for this if you so wish. All right, now we're getting toward the last part of the presentation. This is the some timelines that are that that have been available. Most of you have seen this already, um, but you know we've, we've already uh, have the stand in 2010, and we're now you know we've already done the board adoption for the for the bottle curriculum. We're now in the phase of you know the the uh, professional development that you're providing for the teachers that we're providing through our targeted professional development meetings. Um, and the revision process that's uh, already begun, uh, the test developments that, that, that uh, will begin once we have identified uh, the new assessments. And then transitions should be completed, ready for completion by June 2014 with full implementation, obviously, for the 2014-2015 school year. This is our comprehensive educational system, all three pieces coming together um, as a whole. And we have the revised academic content st standards first, the model curricula, and then the alignment of the assessments that will be aligned to the first, the top two pieces there. All that is related, part of the entire pie. Now, this is our social studies navigation page. This is a page we hope you have the teachers become familiar with. There's a lot of things here that are available. For example, you'll see at the top there the social studies revised academic content. There's another link to get to the page where we have the model curriculum, the standards, and the transition tools. Underneath that, you'll see the targeted professional development meeting. When teachers when your teachers sign up for the Target Professional Development Meeting, they are taken to that website, and they are, uh, and there is the information of what they need to do to prepare for uh, the meeting they will attend, what materials they need to bring with them. And you can go in and see what they want. And the PowerPoint for that we will uh, eventually make available for you uh, following the conclusion of our Target Professional Focus 2 development meetings. Um, you'll see the Ohio's transition schedule. You'll see the contact information in case you need to contact us. The teachers, again, we, we would like for them to become familiar with us. Uh, at the top right, I'll have them access the Ohio Social Studies Signal Newsletter. And, and I'll, 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 I'll expand upon that in just a minute. There's some frequently asked questions on financial literacy requirements. We, we get some questions every once in a while. That's a good site. There's some FAQs in that site. There's some samples. But essentially all the information you need as curriculum people and as administrators, uh, you'll find in that website. Um, and then you'll see the current standards access. And we have professional resources that we actually updated uh, back in uh, August of, of, of last year. So this is really a good site. Please make uh, sure it's available for your teachers. Now here's the signal. Here's, here's the value, and we hope your teachers sign up for this. And most of you, I know, already have your teachers sign up for this. This is our newsletter. Uh, the February edition just went out last week. This comes from us. We send it out once a month, and we provide several things. First of all, and usually up front, are the news that's coming from us. What's happening with the, the development of model curricula? What's happening with the uh, re anything new on the revised standards, on transition, on any new tools, uh, uh, professional devel development opportunities related to that? We provide that information for you. We also provide professional development opportunities that we receive from many of our stakeholder groups around the state. 
and also from national organizations as well. So those are valuable uh, opportunities for our teachers to, uh, to, to learn about. So again, all they have to do is go into the navigation page, as I mentioned before, click on, and they can actually capture previous issues that they want to. But down at the bottom is a place where it says sign up. And all. It's very easy for them to sign up, and they become part of our list serve. This is a very valuable tool. One of the other things we've been telling them to do is, is one of the organizations is the Ohio Council for Social Studies. We are really uh, encourage teachers to, uh, to join the Ohio Council for Social Studies. Membership is only $25 uh, for a year. It's a valuable organization for, for two reasons. First, there's a, a newsletter that comes out about four times a year, and the first article usually that comes out is from my colleague, Bill Music who always updates everything everybody needs to know at this point and what we know on, on um, any new legislation, anything that we know on assessments, um, any, anything else that uh, we feel the field needs to know. Then also there's wonderful article, articles in there and valuable uh, resources, and then also they have a, a great conference in the fall we urge our teachers to attend. Here's our contact information, and um, we get a lot of questions. Our, our uh, charge is to respond ASAP to any question that comes to us. If we don't have the answer, if it's not an answer that, that actually uh, can be answered in our office, we'll make sure the appropriate person within the Ohio Department of Education uh, receives your question so that you can you or your teachers can get a rapid response. Now, one of the things I also wanted to mention were some of the curriculum tools, some of the new transition tools that, um, oh, uh, that, that we have. And those include, uh, I mentioned the vertical alignment chart. We have the gap analysis uh, coming. Uh, we within this week or next week we're going to have a gap and a district gap analysis uh, tool. This will be for all four content areas, and it'll be for you to use. It'll have some questions at the top to look through your current curriculum to to see uh, where there is possible alignment, what needs to be done, uh, and including other factors you might. Uh, need to consider. So this is a tool, another, and this is a tool similar to the one under the 2000 tool, the transition tool, except this one we, we, we've, uh, we think we have uh, uh, questions that will provide better guidance for you. Again, watch for that. That'll be up within the next week or two. And then also later coming in, in, a, in a couple months is a curriculum revision tool perhaps a curriculum map or something uh, that your district uh, might be able to use to, uh, to organize your uh, and, and write uh, new curriculum. So again, that's coming. Um, now, on uh, at the professional development opportunities, oh, by the way, here's the post-assessment. And then we've got a few other things. We have some questions uh, we'll, we'll uh, attempt to answer in just a minute. But see how you did on these. Um, First question I asked you was expectations for learning in the model curriculum are statements that specify what students should know and be able to do and can provide guidance for how students may be assessed. Well, if you put true for that one, you're correct. The second question was students are required to have one half unit of American history and one half unit of American government for graduation. If you put true for that one, you're correct. The next question I asked you was, uh, was uh, the new high school courses developed under 2010 social studies standards are grade specific. You put false for that, you're correct. They are not grade specific. And the last question I asked you was the 2010 academic content standards for social studies were created as a response to federal legislation. If you put true for that one, you're wrong. It is false. It's state legislation. And we actually asked the teachers during this, our target for it, this is not for you, this is for our teachers, and it, actually, it includes the teachers that are attending the Focus too. They have the opportunity to get a certificate for, for participating for worth 2.5 contact hours. We ask them to go in and complete a survey. Immediately upon completion, they get the certificate. Again, this is not for you to complete, but this is there uh, for the teachers who attend. 
And so we're going to attempt to uh, answer some questions. And uh, my colleague Bill is, uh, has some questions, and he'll uh, give a response. And we do, again, if you would like to submit. We have got, if you've already submitted questions, know that we are getting them. And we appreciate your questions in the upper far left corner of your screen. You will see a, a little box that says chat. You need to click on to the plus sign. It will drop down, and you can submit your question there. So with that, we do have some questions, and, and we'll let Bill and Dwight answer them. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we had some questions, and I'm going to uh, address them basically in the order in which they uh, uh, appeared on our on our screen. And some of them I think you'll, re you'll recognize uh, were answered later on in the presentation, but I'm going to cover them again just to make sure that, that they are addressed. Uh, there was a couple questions came early on about the uh, content statements, that there's no verbs in the content statements. They were, uh, people were indicating this was somewhat confusing but didn't define what students should be able to do. Uh, as you probably picked up uh, later on in the presentation, the, the verbs appear in the expectations for learning. When you go into the model curriculum and you see the content elaborations and then following that, the expectations for learning, there the verbs appear, and that does begin to give you the parameters or, uh, around which uh, you can devise your own assessments and uh, at the state level be looking at uh, identifying items that are applicable for that, uh, uh, that content statement because the expectations for learning give us, give us that kind of direction. Um, a related question was, would these change as the new assessments are redefined? And as you heard Dwight say when he was talking about the model curriculum, that that, that portion of the model curriculum was what we call static. They're not going to change. Uh, even as the new assessment system uh, comes into being, uh, this model curriculum, these expectations for learning will provide the guidance uh, as we develop the new state assessments. Um, a related, another related question was, um, will the, the verbs or con the cognitive levels be defined at some point? And again, that's the expectations for learning. That's where you find the, uh, the level at which we expect students to perform and the area in which we expect them to perform uh, on the state assessments and then you as well in your local assessments. We had a question in regards to uh, credits that are required for high school and, and uh, the state requirement. Your local requirements may be may exceed what the state requirement is, but there are three Carnegie units or three credits required for graduation uh, under state law. Uh, the three qu uh, the three credits must consist of a half unit of American history and a half unit of American government. That gives you one full credit, and then the remaining two credits are elective, and uh, the local district will decide what, uh, what it wants its students to have in order to graduate, uh, if there are any uh, specifications. Uh, and you can you can exceed these if, you, if there's three and a half credits locally that are required for graduation and there's another graduation specification. Perhaps you have a half unit of economics that you require your students in your local district. That's, that's fine. But as far as the state is concerned, it's three units are required and a half unit of, in the three units, a half unit of American history and a half unit of American government, that, that consists of the graduation requirements. There was a question about the, uh, uh, when Dwight was talking about the vertical alignment in pre-K through 8, and we had a question come through that said, well, the vertical alignment goes up to, uh, up to grade 8, what about the high school? Well, to understand about the high school, the high school courses are basically extensions of the four strands that we have in the, in the standards. Uh, the high school builds upon what students have been exposed to in pre-K-8. And in essence, the high school courses are capstones. We have two history courses, for instance. Those are capstones. They, they differ in terms of the, uh, the content, the American history as opposed to modern world history. But they, 
they build upon what the students have been exposed to earlier. Same thing with the, the geography course. The, that's the capstone for the geography strand, the economics and financial literacy. That's the capstone. So all these high school courses build on, on some component of the uh, pre-K-8 uh, vertical alignment and are the, the culmination of that alignment. Uh, there was a question regarding the PowerPoint that uh, you're seeing on the webinar. Uh, and where can they find it? And uh, it's available on our website. Uh, Dwight was walking you through it, and he pointed out to you where you could find the social study standards and model curriculum and the transition tools, and that's where you'll find the PowerPoint that's associated with this uh, presentation. Uh, we started to get some, some questions about the assessments. Um, and... Uh, I'm going to kind of lump all these together. Um, about decisions have been, uh, have any decisions been made regarding which grade levels and which courses will be assessed in social studies? Uh, the answer to that uh, at this moment is no. There's been no final decisions made. We're in the process of, of looking at uh, transitioning from the current assessment system to the new assessment system, and part of that examination is to uh, try and figure out uh, which grade levels will be assessed and which high school uh, courses will have uh, in the course exams. Uh, the Ohio Revised Code gives some guidance to that. It talks about uh, uh, examining um, uh, what students can do at the ends of, of grades five and eight. Uh, and it does talk about end course exams, but at, at this point we don't know exactly which grade levels. We don't know. There was another question that came up about grade bands. We don't know how extensive the grade bands will be or if there will even be grade bands. Um, we don't know the number of courses that will have uh, uh, exams. We don't know the titles of the courses that will have exams. The best thing to do is to, is to uh, watch the website. We're putting updates uh, up there as as we can, as we as we know the answers to these questions. But at this point, uh, that's the best we can say. Um, another question about the status of the new assessments. As I indicated, we're in the process of, of looking at a transition plan. Uh, how do we move from uh, the current assessment system to the new assessment system? If you'll recall, when we moved from proficiency testing to graduation testing and the new Ohio, uh, originally what was known as the Ohio Achievement Test, now the Ohio Achievement Assessments, uh, there was a transition period where, uh, that we went through and, and uh, all the districts were given guidance on what students, which, which classes will be subject to which, uh, which assessments and so on and so forth. That's what we're looking at doing now, and part of that is you know, having to determine uh, in conjunction with other initiatives that are underway, uh, our participation with an assessment consortia for the Common Core courses in mathematics and language arts, uh, the legal requirements in the Ohio Revised Code, the number of assessments to be given at any particular grade level, all these factors are uh, in the mix right now and trying to figure out the, the best way and, and the least disruptive way to uh, move to the new assessment system. So that work is, is uh, ongoing. Um, question, uh, question here about are there plans to open source documents? Oh, uh, a lot of new resources are needed for 4 and 6. Um, I'm not sure what the open source idea is necessarily the model curriculum certainly points the direction to a lot of resources that can be used to, and for grades four to six. As Dwight indicated, uh, our plans are to periodically update uh, that fluid section of the, of the model curriculum. Um, we're, we're trying to identify uh, materials and uh, websites that are up and running and available for teachers to use. As Dwight indicated, uh, we've already had to, we found some dead links. And some links have gone down, so we're trying to delete those and get those out of there so uh, people aren't detoured in the wrong direction. 
so that the model curriculum is uh, really the uh, the vehicle we're using to get teachers into resources that they can use for uh, instruction. A uh, question about how is social studies working with ELA to implement the Common Core CCSS for history and social studies? I think they're talking about Appendix B in the um, Common Core standards. Um, we have a, a, a team that is uh, established here at the department that is looking at ways in which to um, uh, help teachers address the literacy requirements uh, with the Common Core and, and integrate those with the standards. Uh, was, we have uh, been looking at what other states are doing. Uh, just recently attended a meeting and brought back uh, some information pertaining to what other states are doing in this regard. Um, we're a little behind with some of the changes in staff here where we'd like to be, but uh, the, we recognize that uh, this is work that needs to be done and it's important to people, and uh, we hope to have that work uh, progressing here shortly. Um, another question about assessments, grade band or grade level. Again, that decision has is, is not been finalized. We, we don't know uh, if it's grade band and if, if it is a grade band, how broad it will be or if it's just going to be for a particular grade level. That's all part of the transition to the new, the new standard, or the, excuse me, the new assessment system. Um, but, um, our so questions are coming fast and furious now. Are teacher prep programs only using 2010 standards, or are they using 2002 and 2010? That's a little tough for us to tell. We don't uh, we don't go out and, and uh, uh, visit the universities to know exactly what they're doing. That would be a, a, a question uh, that could be. Uh, directed uh, to our teacher preparation uh, staff, um, we are making the universities aware of the new standards and the expectations that we have for uh, 2010. Uh, there is, a, there is a, a group within the Ohio Council for the Social Studies uh, made up of university personnel. Uh, they're certainly well aware and participated in the development of the new standards, so they, they know what's, what's going on. and, and uh, they're also familiar with the timeline that Dwight shared with you about the transition to the new standards and the new assessment system. But um, we can't really tell you for sure, uh, you know, if they are and which, which institutions are using uh, 2002 or 2010 or conceivably both as they transition. Um, expectations seem broad and ambiguous. Can you speak to the type of assessment questions? Um, the uh, again, you have to look at really three things to to give you a sense of where the uh, assessment items, uh, the the development of assessment items will come from. As Dwight mentioned, you need to be aware of the content statement. That gives you the bare bones structure of what the expectation is. It's fleshed out through the content elaborations, and then finally, when you get the expectations for learning. That gives you the the um, the level at which we expect students to perform. We are moving in the newest assessment system uh, to online assessments. Uh, so we're looking at, at items that can be done uh, online, um, and uh, students will be able to see the items online and be able to respond online. Uh, I, we're looking at the youngest students possibly be responding on, on paper instead of online, uh, but that's, that's something that's under discussion. Um, the, uh, the online assessments, though, uh, have a, a wide range of different types of items. Uh, the important thing in terms of the instruction that you're going to do is to, again, look at the content statement. That gives you the, the, the area in which we're attempting to uh, lay out the knowledge the students are expected to know. The content elaborations, that gives you the, the, um, 
the, the extensions, if we're, if we're talking about something about types of government, well, which types? The, the content statement may say uh, various types of government. Uh, the content elaborations would say, well, are monarchies in there? Are theocracies in there? Are democracies? Are they presidential democracies? Are parliamentary democracies? That's what you look at the content elaborations. That fleshes it out, gives you a little more direction as to the, the nature of the content. And then you look at the expectations for learning for the, the level of, of uh, student performance that we're going to have there. Um, is it advisable to convert every grade level to new standards next year, or is it better to gradually do a couple next year? Those are really decisions you're going to make locally. Uh, this is a, uh, right now, uh, Dwight has up on the screen the standards transition timeline. Uh, you can see that the, we're in the transition period, and one of the elements of that transition period, the second one listed there, is local curriculum revision. This is a decision how you want to handle it. Uh, certainly a, a big impact, a big consideration is what we're doing with the assessments and when we're going to have those assessments uh, come online. You can see that the transition is due uh, to be complete in June 2014. We'll be transitioning to the new assessments in the school year 14-15. So that, uh, you know, gives you kind of a, a, a deadline to have the, the everything done. Uh, in, in social studies, uh, we don't have a concern with the Ohio Achievement Assessments presently because of budgetary restrictions we're not assessing uh, in uh, grades 5 or 8. So it is uh, possible to, uh, unlike some of our colleagues in other content areas where we still have those assessments, social studies is freed up a little bit and you can uh, look at uh, developing local curriculum uh, without uh, the pressure of having to still have students perform on the Ohio Achievement Assessment. Graduation tests are over a different matter. Yes, there we are continuing to give the Ohio graduation test, so uh, that, that's a consideration you have to uh, include in your calculations as well. Um, extensions of the content standards in all four levels. Okay. There were, um, this wasn't phrased. I'm, I'm told this wasn't phrased as a question. It was more of a statement. Extensions. This may in all four levels. Um, well, yeah. If 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 by levels you mean content areas. And that would be the four content areas where we have the new standards. And if you're talking extensions for students uh, needing modifications to their curricular program, uh, those ex uh, there are extensions uh, being developed and uh, they are being reviewed. Uh, and I'm not sure um, what the deadline is to have those available, but they're, they are in process. Um, what about high school students who wish to take assessment not online? Some studies show some learners do better not on a computer. Um, that's a, a question that, uh, quite frankly, hasn't, at least I haven't uh, heard discussed here within the agency. Uh, I'll, I'll forward this. Uh, when we have a meeting or an assess, uh, on assessment development, and I'll just uh, tell you that I'll forward that and, and bring that up and, and uh, uh, see if, if it has been addressed elsewhere or if it's something that we need to, to look into. I think Dwight's recovered from the presentation. He's got some questions he wants to go over. Yeah, there are a couple questions on the survey. Now, the survey said that, that it's closed. Well, yeah, it is closed because this survey was the one that was provided for the teachers attending the Focus One profession, Targeted Professional Development meetings. And it ended when those meetings ended. I just put it up here to show you that the teachers could get, uh, get, get some credit for that. Now, under the Focus Two, there is a survey at a different, uh, there's a different address for that, but the teachers who attend the Focus Two are given that address and are encouraged to go in and get the uh, complete the survey and to uh, and, and to get the 2.5 contact hours. 
Now, related to that is, is the PowerPoint. First thing I mentioned before, this PowerPoint is available for you to download under Transition Tools. Now, we don't have that. I, I believe we deleted the, uh, this slide on the meeting evaluation because when you present, we're not asking teachers to um, provide an evaluation from what you present. That was only for the TPD meetings. Also, the other, another question was whether or not uh, we will uh, have this presentation. This presentation is being recorded, so you will be able to go back and, and, and listen to it uh, in, in the future. We, we expect within a week. Perhaps within a week, as, pa as, as Patty mentioned. Any other questions? We have uh, one question just came in about practice tests. When will the practice test be available? Well, uh, that question is a little premature. As I indicated before, we don't know uh, which grade levels are going to have uh, the new achievement assessments. We don't know which high school courses or uh, how many high school courses or which high school courses are going to have end of course exams. So uh, it's, uh, this question is just premature. It'll be one of the things that we will have to look at in terms of the uh, transition to the new, uh, new assessment system. Um, there's a question here about what tasks need to be completed before the new tests come out. I'm assuming that these are tasks that local districts want to complete before the new tests come out. Uh, certainly, uh, the, the, the transition to the new local curriculum, looking at what the state standards are, the all the content statements as appropriate for the grade level or the high school course, the content elaborations, the expectations for learning, that during this transition period that we're in right now, uh, you want to have your local documents complete, you know, in a particular grade level, particular course, you may want to add content. As Dwight said, one of the reasons for the uh, uh, the new standards was to allow districts to go into greater depth. You may want to plan for, uh, now that you have fewer content statements to go over at a given grade level or in a high school course, uh, what, is the, the what are the opportunities for greater depth? Uh, where do you want to take students uh, in your local curriculum? Uh, where do you want them to uh, you know, do some performance type of tasks? Uh, where do you want to integrate the literacy from the Common Core? What are the primary source documents that you want to utilize? Those would be the kinds of tasks, uh, certainly, that you would want to have done locally, uh, all of which would lend themselves to uh, enabling your students to be prepared for the, for the new assessments. Uh, I think we have another question. It's being transcribed. Um, will there be training for uh, special education? Um, the, uh, presumably this is uh, in regards to the extensions. Um, I don't know the answer to that rate offhand. I suspect that there will be some professional development associated with them. We, we generally do when we have uh, a, a new uh, uh, development such as these uh, these extensions, uh, but as I indicated before, that work is underway, and so again, this question may be a little premature. I don't know what the plans are for professional development. I want to mention also what we're doing on the Focus 2, and that eventually this is essentially, for lack of a better word, Standards 101. For the Focus 2, we're actually going deeper. We're asking teachers to bring in a unit that, that they've used that, that is aligned to the current standards, and during that time, they're actually going to be realigning that unit u using the comparative analysis and crosswalk tools and model curriculum. So we encourage your teachers to come to that. Again, we'll be making that PowerPoint, those activities available later on uh, this spring. Anything that you have found useful here, uh, any activities you would like to have, please email us. Uh, we're more than happy to send you those and answer specific questions. Uh, we'll have one more, one more question. There's a question that just popped up on the screen about the Common Core. Whoops. And, and are the Common Core and Revised Standards the same? 
Um, the Common Core is in the areas of language arts and mathematics. Uh, so social studies is not part of the Common Core. The social studies standards are, are state developed and uh, same thing with science. Uh, the science standards are, are uh, state developed. Um, the, um, uh, the basic elements, the, the pieces and parts, if you will, we tried to uh, uh, keep that as much the same as we could, but um, understand that the Common Core was, was not designed by Ohio, but was designed by a consortium state, so we were uh, limited in, in how much we could influence exactly how those were designed. Um, it's a question here about how teachers can register for focus group two. They go through they go through stars, and when they go into stars, they uh, put in targeted professional development, and then click on whichever one they want to attend. If they want to attend social studies. That's fine. Uh, if they're welcome to attend the other content areas as well, and they can also get additional contact hours by completing the evaluation uh, survey for those particular. TPD meetings, uh, they are uh, they actually attend. And if you forget some of this information, just email us, and we'll be glad to get that uh, get that back to you. With that, we appreciate uh, your attendance, and uh, we hope to hear from you soon. I hope to see you, and please keep and watch our uh, website for additional transition tools. I'll turn it back now to Patty. As a reminder, this session was recorded, is being recorded, and will be available, we anticipate, within the next week. We will send a message out to those who registered to let them know that it is now available. Uh, you also will be getting an email message either today or tomorrow to give us more feedback on using this technology and, and any suggestions that you have uh, for us on that. We will be staying, keeping uh, the site open. If you want to ask some other questions before you leave, we do see people leaving uh, the call, and so we want to be respectful of everyone's time. We have uh, answered all the questions that we have gotten in the chat box. So thank you again. Uh, let Dwight or Bill know if you have any other questions. Have a great day.